We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. Carl. Carl is using a JVC DLA X750R projector with a Denon AVR X7200WA AV receiver and the Oppo UDP203 Ultra HD Blu-ray player. Nice gear. All right. For each of these three components offers a gazillion setting options. Can we tell him what the best settings are or where he can find those best settings? Yes. Good. I'm looking at this big old long link you got here. That's crazy. I can't, I've <laughs> that, ne- that's the link. That's a big link. Uh, <laughs> all right. So let's just talk about in general. Okay. In general, right, what you want to have done is you want your video processing to be done at the place where the video processing is done best. Okay. So okay. usually you have a number of places that you can do that. You can have it done at the source. You have it done it at the receiver. Or you can have it done at the display, wherever yes. that might be. Okay, so if your display might be a, a CRT, it might be a projector, it might be HD, it might be SD, it doesn't matter. What matters is that thing can only put a certain number of pixels in a certain configuration, and that's it. It might be you know four 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 to three, it might be two point three five to one or something like that. It, it, it's you know sixteen by nine. It's going to be something, but all it can do is whatever that resolution is ten eighty p. That's all it can do. No matter what signal you send it, what's coming out is ten eighty p question is how good is that going to look when you don't actually send it an actual pixel mapped one-to-one 1080p signal because if you don't if you do that if you send it 720 or 1080i the tv or the display has to do some processing has to because i it can't do it it cannot put those things out there because it doesn't it isn't a 720p display it's a 1080p display so that means it has to take, take the 720 and turn it into 1080 where does that happen best now you have a udp Mm-hmm. That Oppo certainly does the video processing best out of all these things. I mean, I would guess based on the fact that they really care about this sort of stuff. And that's why you spent the extra money on it. Plus, you are, you know, you want to make sure that whatever your setting is on UDP is what the actual resolution is of your projector. Once you've done that, then you know that everything coming out is going to go straight through. Just have the receiver pass it through. The the the, the receiver the, the display will say, hey, I know what that is. I can put that up there. You told me where to put every pixel. I'll put that pixel there. Good to go. So the rest of it, though, we go to the audio side. So if you're well, that's that's more or less his second question. Okay, so well, let's we just I know that. Let's that go. I, let's go. So yeah, that's that's the overall gist of it. Now, Rob's sure. going to tell you exactly what you should set this thing at. Sure. So step number one, I'll say your AV receiver because video wise, I don't want your AV receiver touching the signal at all. Yeah, that's usually the case. So all of your video processing settings that exist within the AV receiver, turn them off. You just want that thing passing the video signal through unadulterated. That's all you want your AV receiver to do. That's pretty easy. Right. For the display, now this is an HDR10 capable projector, but it was like first generation and the way it was sent out of the factories, it wasn't quite done properly, but JVC figured out the correct settings and has a fix. We will have the link for this at avrant.com. So come to the show notes. We'll have the link. Or if you need it right now, just go to Google, type in JVC Projector HDR Settings, and it'll take you there. It'll be the first thing that shows up if you search for that. They tell you exactly what your settings should be so that HDR will look correct because there are a gazillion settings, Mm. and you'd have no idea what they ought to be if someone didn't tell you. So this is very valuable. This is directly from JVC. It's from the manufacturer. It's not somebody guessing at this randomly. These are the correct settings. That's what you want to enter for your JVC. On your Oppo, there are a couple of settings that I would recommend changing. You don't really have to. Um, There is a checklist. Watershade.net put out a checklist, but they're basically just showing you what all the settings are and what the default values are. Start from there. If you need to do a factory reset on the Oppo so that everything's at the default settings, start from there because there's very little that you should need to change inside of the Oppo. In fact, if you left everything at default, because pretty much all of them are set to auto, you'd probably be fine. 
but there's a couple of things that might help you out. Number one, it does give you the option for locking the video output resolution. Instead of having that at auto, you can lock that to something. Hmm. If you want to lock that to 4K auto, so auto in that case is referring to the frame rate. But if you want to lock it at 4K auto, now all that stuff that Tom talked about, anytime you're upscaling anything, because the JVC accepts a 4K picture, it wobbles a panel to do it, but that's how you get the, the sharpest image, right. is by sending it a 4K signal. So if you want to lock the OPPO to 4K auto, that's one thing you can do. The important one is in the chroma subsampling. There is an option to output, of course, auto, but you have the options of uh, YCBCR at 444, at 422, or at 420. And in your case, you actually want to set it to 420. All right. Now, at some point, it's going to get brought up to 444, and then it's going to get translated into RGB. That's how displays work. But you actually want to send out of the OPPO a 420 signal because the JVC works best when it gets a 420 signal. Uh, the chipsets are a little bit older, sending it a 444 signal can cause some problems. And what's on your discs, what is actually on your Ultra HD Blu-ray and Blu-ray discs is a 420 chroma signal. That's what's on the disc. So you're not doing any harm to the signal by sending out 420 from the OPPO. That's one setting I would change. It, it's gonna work a little more smoothly. The last setting I would change is the bit depth of the color. I would lock that at 10. Because same thing, the JVC can technically accept a 12-bit signal, but sometimes it causes some issues. So you have the option of setting it at auto, 12, 10, or 8. I would set it at 10. Everything will work more smoothly that way. So those are the three settings in the OPPO I would do for that specific JVC projector. And then the JVC settings from JVC themselves and the AVR, get it out of the way, turn everything off. That has to do with video. Hmm. So Carl's audio setup is 7.2.4 configuration using Martin Logan speakers and SVS cylinder subs. Since he has the X7200WA offers so many settings, how can he be certain that everything is set optimally? Is this one of those ones where it's weird <laughs> in that uh, <laughs> you have to like go into some weird menu and tell it that you don't have speakers and you do have speakers in order for it to have to do the seven point? Ah, uh, if you yes, yeah, so if you're doing the setup wizard. Right. Um, it does have the thing where if you are using upward firing speakers, I don't know if he, I don't think he is. Right. I think he's using actual speakers on the ceiling. So if you're using actual speakers on the ceiling, it'll be simple because it'll ask you how many overhead speakers do you have? And you say, I got four of them. And where are they? They're top fronts and top rears or whatever you happen yours to are, be. Yeah. Front heights and top middles, whatever it is. So that's easy. It's only if you are using upward firing speakers, you have to tell it, I don't have any overhead speakers. And then it'll bring up the menu that says, how many Dolby upwards firing speakers do you have? It's kind of hidden. All right. So we'll see if that's the case or not. But right. this has got Odyssey. I mean, Odyssey, you should be able to just plug in the mic and it'll start you into this configuration process. I mean, honestly, the setup wizard that Denon has is... It's good. It's, it's it, genuinely it, good, and it will get you to go through Odyssey as part of the right. whole setup process. And, and I would just, I would just do that. Now, yeah. Afterwards, what mm. I usually do after Odyssey does all of its stuff, and I move, you know, I I move the microphone around a bunch and do all the stuff that you're supposed to do. I usually go back and change the crossover settings to 80 hertz global. Yeah. That's pretty much the, I, I do it every single time. There's parts of me that think, well, you know, maybe Odyssey knows best. No. It doesn't. 80 hertz global. That's, again, Gotta that's not go. even Odyssey. That that's Denon in that case. That is when true. It comes to crossovers. And, and I, I mean, I just, I just know in my, I, I like, I, I know I should experiment. I should listen to some sweeps, you know, and have it do the sweep thing, and then see what, which 80 hertz done. Gotta go. Sorry, I'm watching the movie right now. <laughs> I go. I ain't got the time I mean, to deal with that. Unless it, unless it set one of them to 120 or 150 or something, yeah. in which case I might leave that one there. If it set it higher, if the auto setup set it higher, right. I might leave it there. But if it set anything lower than 80 hertz, I'd probably just bump it to 80 hertz. Yeah. Life will be easier. Um, and especially if the auto setup sets any of your speakers to large, change them to small and 80 hertz. Right? But yeah, primarily run the auto, well, do the wizard, do, do the setup wizard, because the wizard will step you through it, including doing Odyssey. After you've completed the wizard, the manual settings I would change are any speaker set to large, change them to small, 
anything that has a crossover set lower than 80 hertz, change it to 80 hertz. Right. And that's about done. Now, the one factor in all of this is making sure that when you are running Odyssey, you have good microphone placement. Because right. that makes a big difference. Right. For that, there's a really good YouTube tutorial that AV Forums put out a while ago. It's, it's really good. Like, uh, there's nothing in there that I need say needs correcting. So we'll have the link for that tutorial, or you can just search for AV Forums uh, Odyssey Setup Tutorial, and it'll come up. That's that's Follow that tutorial for the microphone placement, and you'll get good results from Odyssey. Yeah, Simple yeah. as that. Want your question answered? Send it to question at avrant.com. is A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.